Made in Japan Heritage 50 Stratocaster in beautiful white blonde. How was it? Let's find out. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well. Oh, you didn't ask. That's fine. Oh, but hey, I hope you're doing well. New guitar day. I spotted this guitar on Reverb a few weeks ago. If you've used Reverb, you can add stuff to your watch list and you can kind of just obsess about it and gas over it. And then, um, you know, and it's pretty unhealthy. And then I finally put in an offer on it because you can do make an offer and it was accepted. And four days later, I had it here. So what is it? Let's bring it up. Let's bring it up and bring it out. You've already seen it probably in the thumbnail. This is a Fender made in Japan Heritage 50s Stratocaster in white blonde. And we'll go over all the specs in a minute. This is a, a Japan market exclusive. So I'm in Canada, in North America. So how did I get it here? I bought it on Reverb and imported it. That's uh, how it works. So what is the Heritage 50s guitar? Here's the official word from Fender. If you go to Fender.com and you change to the Japanese site, it's all in Japanese, so you have to translate it. Heritage 50 is a series that pursues the supreme playing experience that vintage instruments give to players. It is packed with specs that attract vintage fans and was adopted under the supervision of Mark Kendrick, who has made a name for himself as master builder at the Fender Custom Shop. All models in the Heritage series are designed based on USA product profiling data, and body shapes and neck shapes are also adopted according to the age. So there we go, that's the official word. I like to think of it as the Japanese equivalent of the Made in USA Fender American Original Series and at a fraction of the price. We'll do a quick price comparison in Canadian. You can convert it to whatever uh, country or currency you're in. So the Heritage 50s with import, you know, conversion, tax duties, cost me $17.89.40 Canadian. So today an American Original Strat uh, in Canada would be $26.89.99 plus 13% tax would be $30.36.69. So both are expensive, but the, you can see the USA is a lot more. Even though it has a hard shell case, take that 200 bucks off and uh, you can see the difference. Also this particular guitar is listed as a B stock item. So what makes this one a B stock? I want you to try to guess during the video. You're gonna watch a lot of close-ups and see, and then uh, leave a comment let me know what you think is the B-Stock before the end of the video and I'll reveal at the end of the video. Why is it a B-Stock? Let's go over the specs. I'll put the full specs on screen for a moment that you can pause and you can use for reference if you want later. But I'll walk down the guitar, not literally, I'll squish it. And we'll talk about each item. Let's start at the top. Maple neck, nitrocellulose lacquer over urethane finish. These are uh, pure vintage, single line, Fender Deluxe tuners. And you've got a bone nut, unique neck. It's a soft V-neck, pretty chunky. 7.25 inch radius with 21 vintage frets, 25.5 inch scale length. The body is ash. I don't know if it's showing well here, but you can see the gloss lacquer is a, a white blonde finish and you can actually see the ash through it. All three pickups are premium vintage style, 60s single coil strap. Got a five-way selector. Volume, tone, tone. There's no tone control for the bridge, so these, that's the neck tone and that's the middle tone. Six saddle, vintage style synchronized tremolo. Beautiful one ply, gold anodized aluminum uh, pickguard. And the strings are Fender USA 250R nickel plated steel, 10 to 46 gauge. It also comes with a Fender Deluxe gig bag. This is the Fender Deluxe gig bag. One really cool thing with the gig bags is, I like that, it's like a pick. I'm gonna actually cut that off and use it as a pick sometime. Um, inside you get the, uh, I think I showed it at the beginning too, but you've got the um, certificate is this giant pick card, right? I showed that at the beginning. The gig bag is okay overall. Uh, it's it's not super firm, uh, it has nice material. It's interesting, it has nice material on the top and then feels super cheap right here. Like the kind of material that will just snag and rip. So I've seen better gig bags. That's my Fender Deluxe gig bag review. Okay, let's go get some more measurements. We'll measure the neck and we'll take a look at the pickups and we'll go inside it and then we'll hear it. 
Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Let's weigh it. I knew what it was going to be before I bought it. I could see the weight. So that's super huge to me. 8.3 pounds. That's pretty much, you know, it's perfect for a Strat. It feels, uh, it feels solid. I do like light guitars as well, though. So yeah, great weight. And now uh, let's take uh, my multimeter and check out the pickup resistance for all three pickups. 5.68 for the neck. 5.67, it's fluctuating a little bit there. Switch the neck and middle, 2.9. I'm really concerned just actually with the, the pickups themselves. There is the middle, 5.73. And then uh, middle and bridge, 2.99. Bridge, 6.0, so they're all roughly the same. So there we go, pick up resistance. Let's take some neck measurements and I'm just gonna remove the strings, pull them out of the way and then later I take them off. Do the nut measurement, I'm gonna block it, but here's uh, your measurements for the nut in different uh, formats. And here's at the 12th fret, the width. And again, you got the millimeters, you got the inches, you got the uh, fractions, I don't know why there's fractions. And then the last fret, 21st fret. So there you go, there's your measurements. Enjoy your measurements. Now let's check out the thickness on this soft V. There's the first fret, okay. Come down the guitar a little bit, check out the fifth fret. I just want to see if it changes much. And you can compare those numbers and see, uh, you know, how it's growing, how it's not too much. It's pretty much uh, the same. And here's the body thickness around that horn. Just checking it out. There we go. Now let's, uh, let's get inside this pick guard. Really cool working with an anodized pickguard. I've never actually even touched or seen a metal pickguard until this one, and it's really nice. It's solid, like you'd think it would be. I'm used to working with the flimsy vinyl or whatever those plastic pickguards are made out of. So just flipping it over, and my goodness, I, I'm, I'm not even like I'm not even exaggerating. One of the cleanest guitars I've ever seen, ever. Look at this thing. It's spotless inside. Cool little routing there. See the grains. The grains, I don't know what I'm saying. The grain of the ash wood. And um, yeah, the truss rod adjustment, you can see that because it's a 50 style neck, you can see the, the truss rod adjustments on the bottom. And check out this, this wiring job, like spotless, spectacular, perfect. It looks amazing, like I could never do this. If Maybe one day I'll do this, I'll practice. And yeah, there's just like no excess wiring, all the, all the soldering is beautiful. Pots are, everything's top quality. It's like I said, it's like an American original, right? It's like mint, this thing's gold. No pun intended, I just said that because I'm seeing gold all the time. There we go. If you can uh, identify these pickups, let me know. I wasn't able to uh, find those model numbers online. And uh, yeah, that's all three of them. That's the bridge, the middle, and the neck. And going back out, just gonna pop it back in. Super easy to put back in. They left enough uh, lead wire so you could, you know, open it up and take a look and not rip it out and break it. Okay, put it back on, put on a couple screws and I'm taking off the output jack ferrule and just taking a look inside, you can see the cool grain. And they dig really deep, they, uh, or they route really deep. I don't know why, but uh, that's what they do. I guess just for the angle, so the, you know, cable can slide in sideways. Just putting the pick guard back on there with all the screws and then uh, flipping it over and uh, I've got a pole in a second here, but I'm just taking off the, the back plate and uh, people like that. They like that sound. Really nice in here too. And it's actually finished inside. I was surprised. Uh, I've seen some that are raw, like raw wood. They actually did the finishing. Look at the soldering here. Even that is like perfectly clean and amazing. All right, off. You like that or you like it on? Let me know in the comments. There's only one right answer, and it's what you prefer. That's the right answer. Here's the uh, trim bar. I'm just gonna flip that back on, and uh, let's go hear it. All right, I'll be using my limited edition Princeton Reverb amp here, and mic'd up with a Sennheiser E906 uh, microphone, and you can take a look in the description. I'll have links to uh, both items if you wanna check them out, and I'll show pedals. Whatever pedals I'm using, I'll show them on screen.
You got to see it, you got to hear it. Let me know what you think. Here's uh, an interesting connection I just made with the guitar. So this happened after I bought the guitar. I was looking through a book I have, it's called 2000 Guitars, and it's this coffee table book that I got from Costco a few years ago. It's got every guitar you can think of. I was looking at the Stratocaster section. I'm like, I wonder if they have a white telly. Oh my God. I was like, I wonder if they have a white Strat with a gold pickguard. And there's a 1954 Strat that David Gilmore used to own. And I didn't even know about it. I, I'd never seen him with it, so can help but notice how similar it was to the model that I just bought. So I'm like, that's pretty cool because I love Pink Floyd and uh, I like uh, David Gilmour and I like Strats and I like all that. So that's that's a cool combination. And it's pink, Pink Floyd. So I did a pink background. Yeah, but I've never noticed David Gilmour playing that, but that's one of the Strats that he actually sold in what, that giant auction he did where he sold off all his guitars that he owned. So I thought that was cool. I thought I'd, I'd share that. Let's talk about pros and cons. And first, the B-Stock question. Did you notice anything? Maybe you didn't even notice anything. Here's the official word from the Reverb Sellers listing. So on the listing, they, they always make it clear. They show the weight and then they show, hey, B-Stock, body. There is a slight unevenness in the finish of the paint on the contour part on the left side. So that's the one thing. And then the second thing is the pattern on the back of the neck is a grain of wood, is the grain of wood. So. Did you notice those two things? I'm, I'm sure people noticed the thing in the neck. Let me know. Anyways, leave a comment. That little neck pattern, it's maple syrup. Just in case you didn't know, you can just like tap into it and drink it out. I'm all about getting deals and uh, you know trying out demo models and B-stocks, so it's worth it. As long as it's just cosmetic and it doesn't affect the guitar's performance, go for it because you can probably get a deal and they can't really argue it. They'll be like, oh yeah, it's B-stock, so take it. I'll take your deal. After uh, having uh, two Made in Japan guitars from Fender, I can say that both are as good as Made in USA. The fit and finish are a level above what I've experienced with the Made in Mexico models that I've owned. I'd say blindfolded, I doubt you'd be able to tell the difference between a Made in Japan guitar and a Made in America guitar unless you really know neck profiles. I've only tried a small sample of guitars in general, right, in the world, and guitars are always made by hand, like there's always hands involved on guitars, so there would be duds and mistakes. And I know there's a lot of machinery involved too, but it happens. So this is my experience with these guitars. That being said, what did I really like about this one? Let's talk about the pros. I like that you can get like a made in America quality guitar that costs less than the American original price with similar specs. Go compare the specs. Maybe I'll do a video in the future. Uh, the fit and finish, ignoring the B-stock stuff, because like I didn't even consider that an issue. Flawless fit and finish. Action was perfect for my taste. Uh, the soft V-neck is nice and unique. It's thick, it's chunky. You grab onto that and you're like, oh, this is different. Um, it's not as big feeling as a U-shape, but it's close. So if you like the fat 50s stuff, you know. Pickups sound really good. Uh, even the bridge, it's not super uh, trebly like, uh, or ice picky. And um, the electronics and internals, top quality and spotless, so clean inside. I, I haven't seen too many guitars like this that are that clean. And it's a good weight, uh, 8.3 pounds, not bad. I think the uh, the finish and the gold, like the white and the gold are gorgeous. Like that that combination, love it. Uh, so I don't really have any bad things to say about it, but I'll, I'll just point out things that I noticed. Maybe you consider these cons. Usually get guitars that I, I'm going to like. Things do pop up, you know. I'll mention it. Uh, the neck shape is not for everyone. It's thick, it's unique, it's the soft V. I think the soft V naming is confusing because it's, you know, it feels big. Vintage frets are very small. Maybe you don't like those. A heavy player, maybe you'll wear them down. Uh, the gloss finish neck isn't for everyone. If you prefer a satin neck, you won't like the neck on this probably. And you don't get a hard shell case. Uh, the Fender Deluxe gig bags are so-so. I showed it quickly, right? Some of the materials are really nice, like the exterior. Um, the padding uh, is good, but just some of that lining feels super cheap, like it'll snag. If you say you had a, a string end and it caught on there, it would probably rip right through it. That's what it feels like. So there you go. If you can get one, I recommend checking out some Made in Japan Fender guitars. I know they do sell a few models over here. It's worth checking those out too. The exclusive stuff is really cool. And uh, I think the models that they are producing right now are some of the best guitars I've ever seen. And they're awesome. So I turn this over to you and your thoughts on Made in Japan Fender stuff and your experiences, good and bad, 
I've seen some comments people are saying it's all mystique and it's not real. I, I've got, I've tried to. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe and like the video and watch the videos and share it around. Share the videos. That helps. That helps the channel the best. So as always, play guitar and have fun and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.